again, everyone. I have a, another message came in through YouTube. This one's for a while ago. I decided to go through a, a lot of my old messages. So here we go. <clears throat> hey, Ali, I know you rarely respond to messages and posts. I get it. Perhaps I need to write this down and know that the person reading it gets it too. After years of depression, anxiety, and confusion, I now I understand. I now I understand what this is. My daughter, she's 26, saw the abuse and validates it completely. However, I made huge errors while raising her. I felt so low and was struggling to support her. Enter the narc, my mother. This woman tortured me and her other children, but I allowed her access to my child. For one reason, I didn't know what was really happening, but this reason is more honest. I felt my rich mother could give her all the things I couldn't. Showered her with gift, gifts, fun day trips, and my grandparents provided a college fund for my child. I was never allowed to see the trust or speak about my feelings when it came to my child's education. I was completely shut out of that. Terrible. I was shut out of every vacation. My child was forbidden to call me when she was with my mom. Awful, but I allowed it. After years of constant abuse and obsession with my child, I finally asked, Mom, why are you obsessed with my child? You can't stand me and you despise her father. What is this? Her obsession with my sister's son was the same. She begged me to talk to my sister she begged me to talk to my sister when my nephew was born. My sister and mom were not speaking for a decade before she gave birth because she needed to have this relationship with her child. Why? Because some law about blood? Why the obsession? Because it's about control. That's why. It's not about your child. It's about controlling your life through your children. And I've talked about that extensively, how narcissistic parents will try to control you through your children and even try to shut you out of your own child's life and you know i i did the same thing with with erin when when she was born even though i tried to go no contact several times and we had all these issues when my ex-wife was pregnant with her you know i didn't want to be the one that denied a relationship of my daughter to, to their grandparents even though I should have and it would have been justified and I would have been much better off if I had done that from from the beginning but we don't and that's part of the pattern of abuse of you know what they said what they set us up for I realized now it was to control my child and have her doubt me right to have another narcissistic abuser what she's doing is she's creating another enabler for herself okay and extending her her network of of abusers she slowly and deliberately my mother began to groom my daughter to see me as evil and flawed it did a number on my child she tried to defend me and eventually went no contact with my mom at age 14. My mom started threatening to exert her grandmother rights and started calling my ex. She hated my ex and offering, offering him money, tons to see my child on the weekends he had her. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as grandparent rights in regards to child custody. None. It's up to the parents. Secondly, as I said numerous times, okay when you're the black sheep and you get married okay your spouse automatically also assumes the role of black sheep as well but when push comes to shove and that narcissist needs to that narcissist will then turn to that ex-spouse and try to make that ex-spouse now a golden child and bring them into the narcissistic network and that's really done as to confuse you and to keep you off balance. It's like, well, what the hell? This person, this woman has hated my ex-husband. 
throughout throughout the relationship and now she's turning to the, turning to him it's really a mind fuck and that's what and that's really to, to push you down further into that hole this was my mother her goal was not love it was to win and use her grandchildren as a way to show how wonderful she is her flying monkeys her flying monkeys were in her life she used my child to gain approval from those people. My mom passed away three years ago. Thank God. Of course, I was disinherited from my grandparents' fortune. And my sibs have stopped all contact with me. No surprise. At her memorial service, every person who spoke and talked about what an amazing grandmother she was. No mention of her as a parent. Nada but she used those grandkids to keep the false image alive. And as I said, for those of you who try to hang in for an inheritance or because of the will, you're gonna be cut out of the will. That's the narcissist's last fuck you to the world. And I remember when Virginia died, you know, we all hated her. The whole family hated Virginia. Yet these other people stood up, people we didn't even know, I guess she did friends and people in her in her um, senior citizens network and a bunch of groups she had belonged to stood up at, at, at her wake and spoke about what a wonderful caring person Virginia was my, my narcissistic grandmother and we're like who the fuck are they who the fuck are these people talking about and it dawned on me like wow this is this is how good this woman was i mean she really had every had everybody else snowballed except her own family who she treated like absolute dog shit but that's what the narcissist does the narcissist is after the affection of people who are outside they're always going to support people who are out who are not blood related who are outside the family you know to, to screw with your head and, you know, that's part of their flying monkey network. Your daughter's in the same predicament, I bet. There she is. Let me not assume, but I get that feeling. Your ex was bought too, and it doesn't always take money to buy others. Uh, it was the money. It was the money, but, you know, I'm not bashing my ex because we are getting along right now, and things are, th things are, things are pretty good. Well, not good. I mean, they could always be better, but they're workable. It is sometimes just a shared desire to hurt. It's like blood brothers, each pricking their fingers and crushing those fingers together to destroy you. Your child does not know any better. She has a mob telling her stuff, and I am sure she's also benefiting from this. Gifts, money, etc. Oh, yeah, exactly. My daughter, like I said. Aaron wrote out a, pay, uh, a four page Christmas lift list front and back and got everything on it, everything, and mostly from my parents. It's deliberate and more soul crushing than any harm my mom did to me directly. This thing, my daughter, this thing with my daughter truly destroyed my life. Well, of course it is. If you love your child and you see this happening and then you feel guilty and you're angry at yourself for letting it happen. I was literally numb throughout her life, the abuse through proxy. My daughter now, she's a B, she's a BP, BPD she is. She can't feel for others, she can't cry, she's damaged. And that's exactly, even though your daughter was given all these gifts and given all this supposed love, it destroys her because she learned how to how to be a narcissist and have and develop borderline personality disorder. And that's why it's so goddamn damaging to have her own mother trashed by her mother. And, you know, that doesn't happen in a vacuum and that does have an effect. Her treatment of me after my mom's death and ultimately being disinherited. Well, my child has no use for me now either. She goes to my sibs behind my back to get money. Her dad helps her write letters to them so she gets plenty and she could care less if I live or die. That's how this played out. I sold my soul to the devil, as you said in one of your videos. I allow it. My child is one of them now. 
if I could go back and change one thing, it would be this. I would have never allowed my daughter to see my mother. I, w I would have felt okay with myself and not so low that I would allow people who hated me to be around my daughter. It affected her. It did. She watched mobs of people hating on me too. Why side with me? I have nothing to give but love, and love is the enemy of the narc. The goal was to kill any chance of my daughter loving me. Game over. They win. She doesn't. Soul-crushing, devastating loss and honesty. I am angry mostly at myself for allowing it. And that's what happens. You know, they, 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 they turn our own children into narcissists. And now, you know, in a few years, she'll probably realize she has a problem if she doesn't already. And... You know, when you're a child growing up with this and adults are telling telling you this one person is bad news and is a bad person, you're going to fall into it, especially when you're being bribed with money and gifts and 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 everything else. And, you know, that, that that's a tough, tough thing to overcome, you know, especially when there's a whole network of abusers, you know, supporting this. You know, this is why... And as you said, you should have just disinherited them. You should have just disinherited them yourselves years ago and, and focused on raising your daughter. But, you know, you didn't even understand what narcissism was back then or that there was a problem. I'm sure you probably blamed yourself for a lot of the problems that were going on. And, you know, because they, they destroy your self-esteem and they destroy your confidence, you know, you do think you need them. You do think you need their money. You think you need that safety net because you mentally never grow up yourselves because the narcissist never lets you grow up mentally. You know, I had the same thing. I made it owed me very good money. But yet I felt I needed this safety net, you know, in the back of my head um, in case something went down. And, you know, in case there was a problem, like I could never really survive without my parents, even though I was surviving very well without them. And in reality, you know, I was making a lot more money than my parents ever had made, but I couldn't see it because I didn't think it was real. You know, even when I, even when, even when you succeed, you still think you're failing. Because you don't think it's real, you think it's a fluke, you think you got lucky, you think this is going to end, and you almost and you, and what you will do is you will set it up to make that true. You will set yourself up for failure until until that um, until that feeling becomes a reality. That until you make yourself a failure, it's like you haven't fulfilled the prophecy yet. I believe that a day when I asked my mother why she needed my daughter so much when she despises me, that was the day she decided to disinherit me. Absolutely. She didn't answer me that day. She snarled. I had seen that snarl before, but this was different. There was a rage in that snarl. I think that was exposed that day. You know, don't go back looking for a a, a why or a moment. Your mother was going to disinherit you regardless. She's looking for a reason. She's looking for a reason. It didn't matter if you called her on that. It would have been something else because that's what narcissists do. I hope you get your daughter back. I pray you do. But these people are evil and determined. They want to win. Yeah, they're terminators. Yes, no contact is the only way. I agree. However, I feel there has to be a way to fight back. I don't want revenge per se, but come on, there has to be something. Perhaps that's what you're doing. The one something we have, the truth. Well, the way to fight back is the way I fight back with my parents. And I tell them, you can do and say whenever you want, but I'm going to outlive you. I'm going to outlive you both. And once you're dead, People are going to know the truth because you're not going to be able to continue this pattern of abuse. And you, will, when you say that to them, you see the panic in their eyes. You see it. You know it. You know, and I know it because my mother, the few times I have spoken to her since, she keeps bringing up how I, what I said that after they die, that I'm going to shit on their grave and, 
And really, when the shitting on the grave is, it's not so much that physical act, not that I would actually do it, obviously, but it's knowing that, because I've said it, I'm like, once you're dead, I'm going to write on your tombstone what you did, who you are, and there ain't a fucking thing you can do about it. And that's what's really bothering them. That's what's really bothering them. Once they don't have a voice anymore, which I think is why they build so, try to build such a network of support, because they all know they're going to die. And then what? Then I control the narrative. And you control the narrative. And people are going to know. My, my, I actually regret, uh, now that I think about, you know, that whole wake thing at Virginia's wake, these people talking, talking well about her should have stood up and said, you don't know what you're talking about. You have sympathy for the devil, sympathy for the devil. This was an evil, wicked woman who's destroyed lives and you people are standing here you know, saying these wonderful things about her. You should ask yourself, why is nobody in her family saying these things? <clears throat> Peace, love, and thanks. I've been watching lots of videos and responding on here. I think it's a form of therapy for me. My therapist was not all that great after six months. I stopped seeing her. It wasn't helping. But these real testimonies of people like you are like eight therapy sessions rolled into one. I am extremely grateful and in awe of your courage. Hugs to you and your wife. She's a survivor too. God bless, Sue. Well, thank you, Sue. And I, I do know you're a, you're a very good uh, subscriber of mine. In fact, I think that this is the person who warned me of that annihilated by society, the guy who was stalking me in the friggin' van. So, so I do appreciate it. But... What, what I've read here and what you've listened to is a full dynamic of a narcissistic mother building up an army of narcissists and basically stealing the love of her own child through bribery and backbiting. And, you know, you've seen her go back to the ex who she hated and then recruiting the ex and making the, the ex into a golden child all through money and bribery. And, you know, you're kicking yourself, or I don't know if you're kicking yourself or not. Or you're trying to pinpoint a moment where you lost your inheritance. You were losing that inheritance regardless. Because, like I said, that's the narcissist's spinal fuck you of control over you is kicking you out of that will. And that's all they got. And that's all they got left. You know, as far as your daughter goes, as difficult as it, it may be, and I don't know if you're still trying to talk to your daughter, cut her off. Cut her off completely. Okay, I don't know if she's calling you or if she's called or if she's completely cut you off or not. Cut her off and let her be on your slave. If that's what you want, if that's what motivates you, money and gifts and everything else, then you stay with those people. Because let me tell you something, once you're completely no contact and you're not responding to any of these people anymore and they don't have their narcissistic supply, you know what they're going to do? They're going to turn their, they're going to turn their narcissism on their, on your daughter to try to hurt you. They will then scapegoat and black sheep your daughter. And that's when your daughter's going to come looking for you. So at that point, you're going to have a decision to make. Are you going to try to teach your daughter a lesson at that point? Do you stay no contact with her or do you finally say, see, this is what I'm talking about. But in saying, see, that's what I'm talking about. What'll happen is once she, your daughter would reestablish contact with you or your relationship would start getting better with your daughter. What they'll do is then they'll try to re golden child. Your daughter would start bribing her again, yada, yada, you know, to, to get back at you. What you would need to tell your daughter to do is, I can't have a relationship with you, dear, until you've cut all those people out of your life, your father included, because they're all bad news. They're all bad news. And I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, and I'm sorry if that sounds unfair, but that's the reality, because these people have fucked you up, have fucked you up. And you could say, like, I didn't understand it's my fault because... I didn't understand the condition because this is what I was raised in. But that's the reality. If you really want to get better, 
you're going to need to cut these people out of your life as well. So thank you for your message. Thank you for your support on my channel. And you're one of my, I know you're one of my top commenters. So I really, I really do appreciate it. And, but what we've seen here, like I said, is another family dynamic of narcissism. And remember, for those of you who have children and have narcissistic parents, there's no such thing as grandparents' rights. None. None. They have no right to your child. As the mother, as the parents, you don't have to let anybody into your child's life other than the other parent. That's Those are the only people that have have any right to access to a child, not a grandparent. They have no rights, none. So, so keep that in mind, but we usually let the grandparents in because we don't want to be that person that cut their parents out and denying a relationship to their grandparents because grandparents are supposed to have a good relationship with their grandchildren. But that's, this isn't a good, healthy relationship. This is just, this is just another extension of narcissism. So I hope that helps. Thank you for the letter. I'm so sorry it took me so long to read it and get back to you. But, you know, as you said earlier, I, I, I do rarely respond to, to car. I did rarely respond to correspondence in the past, primarily because I get so many of them. And, you know, it, 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 it's tough to. But now that I'm seeing being able to read these stories on the air will actually help me brought in my channel and helps a lot of other people hear these stories and and what we're finding is there's so many similarities and so many identical things that go on that they really do need to be read they really do need to be read on the air so so thank you again okay once again if you if you enjoyed this video and you like this channel and you want to see it grow please consider uh, supporting my GoFundMe can the the link is in the description box okay and remember if you do if you do make a donation and you want your story read and you want me to talk about it okay you go right to the top of the list and i immediately make a video the first chance i get this is ollie matthews thank you everybody for watching and i'll see you all again very soon take care everybody bye